All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday. Friday's training is seeking approval. How to seek approval. Team David Meltzer, why don't we post up how to join free training at david at dmeltzer.com. How to join our community at 949-298-2905. Let's pin that up there. Jake, good morning. Andrew, good morning. Thank you for joining our group, by the way. I saw that. Colleen, welcome, welcome. Jamie, everybody, welcome so much. Send me your request to go live this morning if you like. I'm going to pin up, like I said, training this Friday is seeking approval, all the nuances of why we seek approval, why we should or shouldn't seek approval, what we can learn from what we're trying to seek of approval, family, friends, associates, people we don't know's approval, being a pleaser, all of these different things that get in our way to getting what we want. Hi, Julia. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so much fun. All right, let's get these questions going. Uh, great day today. I love Wednesdays. What do you still struggle to learn? I... I am telling you, I am still struggling to learn the need to be offended. I would say, you know, I, I have dropped into minutes and moments the need to be right. Uh, but it is amazing. Uh, I don't know if it's the OCD in me. Like, I seek perfection in people. And I, instead of looking for what is perfect in them, I'm looking for something that's not per possible. <laughs> perfection. You, you know what I mean? And it's like, and, and I'm being like... Uh, uh, I'm practicing not only like the need to be offended, but like being offended by other people and having a need to be offended. That's where the level I'm at. So it's like, oh, well, we couldn't tell this person that before this and that. And it's like, why? Because they're going to be offended. <laughs> they're going to be offended. Are, are you kidding me? Uh, you know, and so that's what I'm fighting most with. And I waste too much time, energy, and emotion with the need to be offended. Uh, I should re-engineer that into a focus of how I can find the perfection or the light, the love, and the lessons in others. But I'm working on it. Every day. How do you change your perspective so that the future can differ from your past? Practice. Uh, so pick one thing to change within the context of the one thing that you want to change as a whole. Pick one thing and keep on changing your perspective of that. Find the light, the love, and the lessons that, then move on to something else. Helpful is being and in taking inventory of your values every morning, personal, experiential, giving and receiving uh, to help you pick that up. What's up, Wags? Going to an interview for a position. That's a big jump in my career. Any advice going into this? Yes. Uh, speak your values. Come prepared. Due diligence, due diligence. Ask a lot of questions. Ask, you know, what are they doing today? What they like about it? What don't they like about it? Find out where you can provide value with the skills that you have, the knowledge of what and who you know, and make sure that you communicate your desire that you must be what you can be, that you live with gratitude, the great perspective of light, love and lessons. You live with forgiveness because you try so hard and make so many mistakes that you want to learn to forgive yourself so you can forgive others and bring the best out in them. You want to show that you're accountable. Right. So if anything hasn't worked out the way that you want it to be, tell them that you yourself has attracted it to you yourself and there's no blame, shame or justification and then connect to them with emotion, inspiration, show your credibility, emotionally attached and then quantify the reasons, impacts and capabilities that you have in order to get that job and you will get it. Think about it. Close your eyes. You will receive no resistance. Happy Veterans Day, by the way, everyone. Happy Veterans Day to everyone. I appreciate your service, past, present, and future service. Everyone, we are one United States of America. We would not be here without our veterans. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. How do you prioritize all your opportunities? Taking inventory of my values every day, personal experiential giving and receiving values, and then I align any opportunities by the importance according to those values. I separate those things that seem to be important but are only urgent, and I put them in my calendar to evaluate tomorrow according to my values tomorrow, or I delegate them to somebody else. Okay? So utilize uh, the alignment, synergistic, supplementary values to what you're uh, looking to do. Jeff. Thank you for this question. How does one with high energy and can't still work, can't sit still, I assume, uh, work at a desk job? Just because you have high energy doesn't mean you can't sit still. So what you want to do is harness what you're always connected to. Don't inhibit that energy. Uh, so what you want to do is focus that energy uh, into what you want. 
Uh, and so one of the tricks is to identify what's causing the interference to that energy that seems to make you impetuous and to in, impatient and breathe, stop, just breathe, find your center and harness all that energy. 1111 is today, Veterans Day today, it's a day of manifestation, harness it to what you want. So be a ferocious Buddha, stop, drop and roll when you feel impatient or uh, non-focused, breathe and roll in the right trajectory with all that energy, like a ferocious Buddha. I just interrogated Nordy $40,000. What should I do? Invest it in yourself. Find someone that sits in the situation that you want to be in. Ask them for directions to get there. Uh, be patient. Don't uh, buy things you don't need. Don't buy things to impress people. Don't buy things to impress people you don't like. Don't buy different things because you think it'd make you happy. Take your time. Do your research. Look to see what's doing well today, what's stable today, what you think will do well in the future. Uh, and uh, seek assistance, seek mentorship, uh, and more, more than happy uh, to mentor you on that too. Anybody out there, right? We have private groups and one-on-one, -on -one, david at dmelcher.com. Just reach out. A free training on Friday, seeking approval. My exercises, my guides, my books are all free. Every single training I've done is featured on Spotify, Entrepreneur, and every platform. You can reach it there, the playbook. Uh, and get some great interviews and other things accordingly as well, beyond just my trainings, of course. We have uh, superstar athletes, celebrities, entertainers, millionaires, billionaires, all types of great people, all with the one common denominator that they must be what they can be. Learn how they apply that to having that inspiration that they were. Here we go. Favorite pet you ever had? <laughs> uh, still today. Well, I thought it was, this is a sad story, I, when I was four, before my dad left, when I was five, uh, he bought a duck in Akron, Ohio, fell in its water or, and froze to death. Um, a baby duck. I thought that was my favorite pet until I had Marley, my 18-year-old miniature dachshund, and now, of course, Coco. And so, love the one you're with. Coco's my favorite. And she is my two-year-old miniature dachshund. And I didn't want her because I felt such loss when I lost Marley. But now Coco's my love. And she's one of my five children now, I guess. All right. Favorite Thanksgiving. Dry turkey sandwiches the next day. I'm a freak. Yeah, great question. All right. Here, let's keep them rolling. Here we go. What do you do to relax or unwind? Well, I have an unwind routine. My tomorrow starts today at 9 a.m. Um... And so my unwinding routine is to make sure I don't have anything that's going to interfere with the conscious continuum of my sleep. Uh, I do anything I can to stay away from negative energy, negative ideas, negative people, negative circumstances, anxiety, uh, alcohol, drugs, caffeine, nicotine, anything. I stay away from it and I unwind starting at 9 p.m every night so that I can make sure that I am passed out before 11 every day so I can wake up by 4 a.m. every single day naturally or before 4 a.m. Uh, at times, especially the daylight savings time. It's a little bit earlier. I don't quite make it to 11 either. How does one get over fear of failure? Well, fear of failure, fear of offense, fear of flight, fear of food, fear of anything is a matter of practice and it's a matter of being a ferocious buddha to stop drop and roll so number one there's identify what you're afraid of Two, stop when you identify that fear get down to center by breathing go to center to neutral to a higher frequency is neutral neutral is a higher frequency uh, and then roll in the right trajectory. Uh, what website or company should i use when investing in stocks no idea but i can put you in touch with uh people who do invest in stocks and they can give you their ideas um how to shift your mindset to serving others well you know um if you don't have a mindset to be of service then you know the first step is to be a mindset to serve yourself and then figure out what to do with what you have most people that don't have a mindset to serve others uh don't and haven't taken inventory in what they have because once they do, the natural reaction to, wow, I'm so blessed to have this capability to teach baseball, I'm going to give it to others. Oh my gosh, I'm so blessed 
to have this ability to cook. I'm going to make meals for others. Oh my gosh, I have this much capability of volunteering my time to feed the homeless, um, right? Whatever it may be, shift your mindset to your capabilities. Once you realize and take inventory of what you have, you'll know where to give it. You ain't gonna keep it. It ain't natural. You'll wanna give it away. So that's how we shift our mindset to being of service and of value to others. Questions often ask, what are the best ways to stay motivated? Number one, I'd like to indicate to you, Anthony, good to see you. I haven't seen you on there for a while. Anthony Ace, good to see you, my friend. Anyway, the best ways to stay motivated. Number one, motivation is a soul sucker. Fear can motivate us. Motivation is a boost of energy. It allows us to get up, get started, get restarted, get back up, but it's not going to get you there. You got to figure out how to use that motivation and transition it to clear the interference, corrosion, void, shortages, and obstacles from your life to be in spirit, inspired, to live your life into a higher gear, a higher frequency, a higher awareness, so the energy continually comes through you. Remember, motivation is a soul sucker. It'll suck the energy right out of you. It will get you up. It'll get you started. It'll get you back up. It'll get you restarted, but it ain't going to get you there. You got to learn how to clear the interference to be inspired because inspiration will get you far beyond, especially with faith, uh, than you even thought you could be at all times. How to, to I fight through stressful business situations? Um, so... <laughs> I don't believe in, like, I believe in activity I get paid for, activity I don't get paid for. Uh, situations are situations. Uh, they all entail activities. Uh, and some people can categorize it as business, but I find there's a lot of personal stress uh, in any business situation. So uh, if you look at it, how do I deal with stress? How do I deal with ego-based consciousness? How do I deal with when I'm out of my learning curve? Once again, you got to be a ferocious Buddha. Identify the fear that's causing the worry, the guilt, the resentment, the interference, the anger, the frustration, the separation, the inferiority, the superiority, the resentment, the offense, the rightness, and find the kindness. Find that center. Uh, you got to practice this, right? So at first you may stay in this situation for years, then it might drop down to months, then it might drop down to weeks, then it might drop down to days, then it might drop down to hours, then it might drop down to minutes, and then hopefully moments. And the more that you spend just moments in the ego-based consciousness, remember the ego is defined as edging goodness out of your life, right? Your ego is not your amigo. E stands for most people are worried about their employment status to the G stands for the worried about what they get or got. And then the O stands for what other people think. So, you know, don't think of that ego as your amigo. That ego is edging goodness out of your life. Let's figure out how to move from there real quick um, as well. Uh, Nima wants to go live with me. All right, Nima. Thank you for asking. Uh, all right. See if Nima wants to go live. I'll answer. There she is. I see. He. Hey, Nima. Hi, 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 Master. Hi, you have a question for me. Uh, I've got. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I'm glad to see you face to face. And unfortunately, my language is not as good as uh, American or English people. That's so okay. forgive me for my language. What question do you okay, have? Okay, I've, uh, I've got uh, some business that I want to uh, employ it. I want to improve it. And I don't know how can I make it uh, international. Perfect. So there's four ways to make a business reach the 4.4 billion people that are engaged around the world in the world in some sort of commerce. And to me, number one, it's making sure that you know the signal that your communication of your product, solution, or service. You want to know what frequency yeah. you're at. So if you're Dr. Pop Pimp Pimple Popper or you're selling, you know, how to wrap uh, gifts or you're selling horse bows, whatever it may be, each one of those things has its own frequency that then identifies to a certain spectrum of people. There's only a certain amount of people that will be interested in horse bows. Uh, and then, of course, you want to make sure that you have a very clear message. Once you have those three things, the strength of your signal, the spectrum of your signal, and the clarity of your message, you then can address 
how am I going to capture this message? How am I going to capture this frequency? How am I going to capture this energy? How am I going to modify it? You know, whether it's through written yeah, content, yeah. oral yeah. content, video content, how am I going to amplify it around the world? And through repetitive posting, through sharing, through paid advertising, whatever mechanism you want to use. And then most importantly, how am I going to have a perpetual strategy in order to allow it to grow and learn, etc. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. That's a great lesson for everyone on how to scale those businesses and think of it as content, as ideas, as frequency, strengthen it, spectrum, and of course, clear message. And we can kind of go from there. Uh, let's take another question. Uh, here we go. Thank you. How to deal with fear of envy, being envious. Well, remember, when we're envious, we're not looking at things in the totality. When we're looking at things in the totality, we realize that when we make comparisons, judgments, and are envious of others, we're creating shortages, voids, and obstacles. We're living in a world of not enough, or maybe just enough for me. But either way, we're creating resistance of what we don't want or what's missing in our lives. Uh, when we can appreciate what other people have, meaning that we're grateful that they have it as well as add value to what they have, uh, it becomes part of us and connected to us, and we're actually attracting it to ourselves. So please utilize no judgments, conditions, or comparisons. Utilize appreciation as your own technique in which to connect to those people that have what you want, not separate yourself from them. What are the best investments for a 17-year-old? Education in yourself, and I'm not saying college necessarily. It's educating yourself, asking for help, getting mentorship, the best investment that you can make is to develop your skills, your knowledge of what you want to know and who you want to know it from uh, and who you are already connected to. And of course, learning about your desire. Learn to be someone that must be what they can be. Learn to be the first one and the last one to leave. Learn to love what you're doing. Learn to find the light, the love, and the love, and the lessons in what you're doing. Know that everybody's life, whether they're famous in, uh, athletes, educators, in, entertainers, media people, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, it doesn't matter. Their life sucks the same amount as your life. They've just been able to figure out how to find the light, the love, and the lessons in what they used to consider being sucky. Uh, so <laughs> those are the best things to invest in yourself. Great questions here. Uh, let's see who else uh, we got uh, going on here. Um, looking forward to the next question. What are the most important questions to ask yourself? Ah, uh, well, one, uh, the worthiness questions of what you love about yourself. Uh, asking yourself your personal values every day your experiential values every day, what you want to experience, uh, your giving values or how you want to provide service or value or, or be productive for others. And then finally, your um, um, receiving values. What do you want? Right? I always tell people, go after this live and ask people, hey, what do you want to do? 99% of them will say, I don't know. Ask them what they want to eat. 99% of them will say, I don't know. Ask them what they want. I don't know. So no in most importantly, take inventory of your values. Ask yourself personal experience or giving and receiving values of what you want. Uh, and then you can ask other people if they know anyone that can help you. Got it? The why comes after the what. It's a big, big deal. How do you deal with being envied by others? I can't control what other people think. Uh, so I know that I can't find outside of myself what I can't find inside. And so if other people are envious of me, I feel grateful that they feel as if I can help them get what I have. Uh, I don't know it because envious people won't, because they're not radically humble. They're an ego-based consciousness. They won't ask for help. So it's a self-fulfilling, resistant, full philosophy. It's the opposite of Akuma Matata, right? <laughs> I should write a song about the resistance, full philosophy of uh, not asking for help, of being envious of others, of feeling inferior, superior, neither of them work because they're separate and you don't one branch does not separate itself from another branch on a tree the tree will die uh so let's all work together and be trees of the same branches of the same tree uh how can i ignore offers well, we don't ignore offers uh we go ahead and uh allow ourselves to uh communicate a response to an offer 
the response can be not at this time, no, yes, or how about this, or I need to learn more, or whatever it may be. So respond to offers, learn more, be more interested than interesting. What are your favorite books? I love this question. Comes up a lot. My favorite books, one, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, two, Wayne, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Power of Intention. Three, A Course in Miracles. I like Surrender Experiment. I like uh, the uh, all my books I like, which I'll send you for free. If anybody wants them, I'll sign it, send it to you. I don't mind. I'll pay for shipping. It's not some kind of uh, back-end sell. I'm not looking to, to make money on shipping. I'm looking to empower over a thousand people to be happy. So go ahead and 949-298-2905. Uh, uh, join my text community. I can give you the, the book request there or david at dmelcher.com. Same place to get exercises, guides, my books, trainings. If you want to see past stuff, it's featured on Spotify, featured on Entrepreneur, every platform. Check out the playbook. You'll love it. You will love it. Lots there. Hello, David. First of all, good morning. Good morning. My question is, what do you know about the sixth sense? Um, well, I don't know what I don't know about the sixth sense. I know that. Uh, what I do know is that we have uh, the ability to aggregate uh, not only uh, our focus using our senses, um, which are faulty, right? The way we see things, hear things, smell things, taste things, um, touch things. Uh, those are faulty. The sixth sense is the awareness of the truth. The higher we vibrate, the more we can be aware of. You can only be aware of that which vibrates equal to or less than you. Uh, but I'm constantly a hypocrite trying to learn uh, the truth, knowing that I don't know what I don't know and that everything I learn, I learn that there's more to learn. And so uh, that sixth sense allows me to find light, love and lessons in everything that I do do. Uh, and it's in a very important sense. I call it the sense of awareness. And one of the greatest awarenesses in business is when to buy or sell, by the way, something I practice that intuition all the time. Uh, when to buy or sell. Easiest way to make money, buy low, sell high. No employees, no overhead, just buy low, sell high. How do I leverage my enthusiasms and passions to my business? Well, you find the light, the love, and the lessons in the business that you're doing. You see how aligned, su supplementary and synergistically aligned, your values of enthusiasm, which is in theos, connected to inspiration, your passions about what you find purposeful, how are those aligned with synergistic or supplementary to the business activity that you have, the activity you get paid for. And uh, by utilizing that, you will see how best to utilize, I don't like the word leverage, but utilize uh, those values, capabilities, uh, skills, knowledge, and desire. Remember, utilize, not leverage. Um, do you know anyone who could help me write a book? I'm happy to help you. Email me, david at dmelzer.com. Uh, more than happy to ha have uh, written four of them. Surrounded myself. I got tons of people, systems, etc. Go ahead and reach out to me. More than happy to be of service. Good questions. How to discern what you think is your purpose and your passion? Same question, right? We want to take inventory of our values and apply the idea that we're going to love light and lessons and everything. That pain is just an indicator. Mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial pain is not a stop sign. Don't quit. Don't get all anxious. Simply get excited that it's an indicator that you have a lesson to learn, that you're angling towards something better. You have faith you'll end up somewhere better than that. But pain is an indicator, not a stop sign. It's a turn signal telling you to go in a different way to a better place, a better position, or make your position better. It's that simple. All right. How to set up a podcast. Go ahead and email me. We have a podcast agency. We can help you. David at dmelzer.com. Just reach out to me. Not a problem. David at dmelzer.com. Get my exercises, guides, books. Register for training. On Fridays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, this training is on seeking approval and all the nuances that are related to seeking approval and why we do it and why should we do it or not do it, why we don't feel worthy of it, whatever it may be. So please uh, reach out to me, david at dmelter.com or join my text community, 949-298-2905. All righty, let's take one more question. Uh, waiting to see, is David here? Uh, yeah, yes. Awesome. I didn't see him there, and Jakey Bicky didn't tell me he was here, but he's here. I'm excited. <laughs> there he is. 
the man that has all the belief in the world and dresses better than I do. What's going on? What's going on, Big Tom? How are you doing? I love what you're wearing, man. It just reeks of energy. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's 11 11 today, so. That's my number. I was born on January 11th, so I'm a 111 guy. And oh, wow. They say that on 11 11, that a portal opens up to the universe, and it's the best day to manifest, to write down what you want. And the universe is listening at its clearest. We got the direct connect today. Okay. So people, I always say this about weird things that I tell people to do. You know, I, tr I wear bracelets. I trace calligraphies. I tell people this. If what, I, what works for you, but number one, is there any risk of writing down what you want? No. No. If it works for you, ta-da. And if it doesn't, what did you really waste, right? That's what I think about wearing my bracelets. This doesn't hurt anybody but it works for me. I trace calligraphies, it works for me. But there's right. no risk. You know, in Mexico City, the, you would have to cut off your head to sacrifice to the gods to get what you wanted, right? To, to live the next life. That seems like a higher risk than writing down what you want. But right. uh, welcome on Veterans Day. Welcome on 11-11. It is Believe Day. You are the belief guy. And uh, I'd love for you to define the blend of belief that exists in the two worlds that you and I both share. The pragmatic world, the currency of money at this world, and of course, the higher serving world that we both connect to, which is a faithful world of belief. How does that work for you, that blend of the two worlds? Wait, let me first say, David, thank you for uh, inviting me on to your, to your live. Uh, I know we've, we've been looking forward to it now for the last, last couple of weeks, and uh, really excited to be on here with you. Uh, first but, of you many, know, first of many, you'll be back. Uh, for sure. You know, that word, believe, uh, it, it, it really means everything to me. You know, it's, uh, it's impacted my life in such a tremendous, tremendous way. I think it governs everything that happens in this world uh, today. Um, from every way of life that we have, it's all based on our belief system. And, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that looks up the meaning of words. I like to break it down. I, I believe words create everything. And to be is to be in a state of, right? To be in a state of. Uh, and then when you look up the word L-I-E-V-E, -E, you'll be surprised to find out it actually means love by God. So when you are in a state of belief, when you're believing, what you're really affirming is I'm loved by God. And you feel, you feel much happier when you're, when you're believing for something. When you're waking up and you're excited about life and you've got a goal, you've got a focus, um, life takes on a completely different meaning. It really allows you to live uh, from the inside out versus worrying about what's going on on the outside and thinking that what's going on in the outside world is controlling what's happening to you in, in your world. And, you know, 2020 has really proven that if you have this type of mentality, you can thrive regardless of what's going on with everything that's happened this year with, <laughs> with the pandemic and, and all the deaths that have taken place. We've lost some incredible people this year. I mean, yeah. incredible people this year. And, um, you know, some people think 2021 is going to be better. I don't necessarily believe that. I don't. I don't think 2021 is going to be better. I believe I'm going to be better, right? I believe that you can be better. And regardless of whatever year it is, you can close out 2020 with a tremendous bang, with a shift in thinking and a shift in mentality. And when it comes to money, you know, money, money answers all things. That's what it says, right? Money answers all things. So that means that money answers my voice. Uh, money answers how I feel. And a lot of people haven't really learned that and practiced that long enough for them to understand how things can actually flow in their lives. You know, it's so interesting. Uh, I look up words, definitions of words, especially as the Internet. You know, I've been in it since 92. Once I realized the power of being able to quickly access meaning, access ideas, beliefs, what I can achieve, all the things that you and I mean. And here's an interesting thing that you may or may not know already. David our names that we share, our belief system that we share, our spirit that we share, uh, it means beloved. Okay. Beloved beloved is directly related to what? Belief, you just said it. Mm -hmm. our, our names are actually integrated into belief. Our names, we are beloved. My last name is uh, means servant. Uh, mm. Meltzer, Meltzer is a waiter, so I'm a beloved waiter. 
Wow. <laughs> so, uh, but I, but belief is so powerful for every. That's why Think and Grow Rich is my favorite book. Mm -hmm. Right, and your conceive, believe, and achieve is just another great way of explaining and clarifying and empowering people. But the most powerful thing that you said, David, to me is the one that allows us to be in control. No matter mm -hmm. what you want, whatever man-made construct of hours, weeks, months, or years, or, or dates that we put on things, the one thing that you said that held the most power to me is that we ourselves have control of our mindset, our heart set, what we conceive, believe, and achieve through our mindset and heart set and the actions and activities that we have. Because what you said was, David, I cannot find outside of me what I can't find inside of me. Absolutely. And you're on an exploration, a beloved exploration of belief and achievement and conceivement and you know all of these great things that we can achieve and money being one of them, an answer of something that can be achieved, that right. we can stop for the right things that we want. Utilizing the mindset and heart set, how do you practice controlling the mindset that you have and the heart set? Because I know you don't do it all the time. I'm, I'm working to get mine down to minutes and moments of right. ego-based consciousness. What practices do you have to stay out of that ego-based consciousness of fear, anxiety, separation, inferiority, superiority, et cetera? You know, it's, it's really simple. Uh, it may take a person a lifetime to find out what it is, but when you find it, it's really in its simplest form. I believe that God gave us five gifts. There, there are 15 of them, but five that we, we know of, and, and it's our, our senses, our five senses. Our five senses really allow us to experience the world that we want to live. And most people, they have given their five senses to the world. And it's now, what am I seeing on CNN? What am I seeing on Fox News? What am I hearing on Fox News? And what you're seeing and what you're hearing all the time, it now filters into your emotional state. So what I did years ago was I started to train my five senses to only see, smell, taste, touch, right? Hear what I wanted for my life. Regardless of what was going on outside of my life, I decided these are the goals I'm going to see every day. These are the words I'm going to speak every single day. I'm going to go and touch the life that I want to live. I'm going to go to those expensive hotels. I'm going to go to the expensive homes. I'm going to go to the dealerships of the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces. I'm going to sit in the car. I'm going to smell it. So when I get back in my car and I realize that there's a difference, right? <laughs> I want that smell, right? I want, I want the Rolls Royce smell. I don't want the Hyundai smell anymore. So now what it did was it triggered action. It moved me from a comfort zone and it moved me to a higher level of thinking of saying, you know what? I don't belong in the Hyundai. I belong in a Bentley. I don't belong in a Bentley. I belong in a Rolls Royce. I don't belong in a Rolls Royce. I belong in a jet. So I utilize my five senses to get the life that I want to live and I do it now, it's, all, it's, it's, it's on a subconscious level. If you come to my home or you come to my high rise, I have my goals everywhere. I'm in my studio right now, it says impact one billion. So every time I'm in here, I see it. I have a picture right there of a jet. Every time I, subconsciously I see it. I don't have to see it consciously at this point. And it's, it, it's all it's doing is just attracting it to me, right? When you hold that image in your mind, right? Think and Grow Rich, one of my, one of my favorite books too. It says you hold that image in your mind persistently it will now gradually move into physical action and then transform into physical reality. So that's all I've done. It's really, really simple. Anybody can do it, uh, but you got to have the discipline, right? You got to do it. I've been doing it now for probably about 12 years now. Yeah, I've been doing it for 15 myself as well. And I see ourselves as a 3D printer. You know, you described exactly, you know, the five senses are the different data inputs that we allow. And we're the 3D printer. So all of what we think, say, do and believe, all the five senses, hearing, smelling, tasting, the consistent nature of it is programming the 3D printer to print out exactly what we want. And if you want a Hyundai, that's fine. You want a Rolls Royce, that's fine. You want a Jet. That's fine. And the nice thing about it is you can change your mind and, and learn from each of those things. And they're individual to your own values. That's quick. Oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Got so excited, Dave. That <laughs> That's going to be a great video, man. I got so there excited. There you go. You know I'm in my closet. I don't lie. Uh, anyway, you're in that nice studio. I'm in my closet. Uh, here we go. La last thing real quick. 
values play an important role. So as you're listing out and people are there and they're sitting there going, oh, you know, these two guys are full of shit. You know, you know, they obviously listen to this station or they're reading this book. These guys don't know what they're talking about. How do values interplay? Because one of the separations that's occurring today is that people don't realize you don't know the totality. So if you don't know the totality, just live your own totality, but don't try to enforce your totality onto somebody else. Right. You, you know, and that's what's happening a lot in religion and politics and in a variety of things in the world right now is everybody's making these, you know, positions and you can't change a closed mind. Right. right? If you tell me I want a jet, I could sit here all day long. I, I, I've had one and tell you why it's not right for you. That's not going to change your mind. It might make you want it more or defend yourself more. I, but I've learned over these 15 years, hey, man, enjoy that jet. Learn from it. Tell me what you think, mm -hmm. right? It, this is the experience I have. But I'm really, I want to know what your values are when you have that jet. I want to yeah. know, you know, what, what your values. So how do values interplay with being able to connect all of us, even though we are allowed to want different things? Yeah, I believe that your value has to be found in your purpose. That's where your value really lies. What is your purpose? Is my, is my purpose to, you know, become a billionaire? Is my purpose to, you know, ride jets? No, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to positively impact the lives of a billion people. Now, my life and what it is that I'm able to create through my belief, my belief system, it serves as an example to someone else that if you follow this formula, if you follow this success formula, desire plus skill times faith, you can have whatever life it is that you want. Maybe it's not a jet. Maybe it's you, you want to, you know, you want a family. Maybe it's you want the, the woman of your dreams or the spouse of your dreams. Whatever it is, you can utilize this formula of believing and it can give you the life that you actually desire. So I look at my life and my purpose is where my values lie. And it's all about impacting people's way of thinking so they can go out there and live the life that they want to live it's that simple and you do so much you know just as the david's symbiosis that we live in the beloved servants that we are and the belief systems that we have created for ourselves you also have a platform to empower over a billion people you know that's my goal in life is and i want you to add that word over don't limit yourself to a billion, my brother. You got bigger aspirations. <laughs> Say over one billion people. Awesome. I just need a thousand people like you that I know will empower a thousand to empower a thousand. That'll get us over a million and over a billion even quicker than you believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the context of that, utilizing a platform, what are all the things that you do from the Belief Nation, author, speaker, entrepreneur? You know, one of the biggest questions I get because we're living this symbiosis life is, all right, I'm, I'm not sure how this all fits in together. How have you created your structure within all the things that you do? How are they relative to each other? You know, one of the four factors that impacts a person's belief system is information, right? Repetitious information. And that's why social media is so powerful because it's constantly what? Downloading what? Information. Now, a lot of the information is garbage. So I wanted to create a platform where all of the information was geared towards what I call the seven pillars of success, where we could actually give people the information when it comes to relationships. We can give people the information when it comes to emotional strength. We can give people information when it comes to health and fitness. We can give people information when it comes to, to leadership and money and success. Seven different pillars where we're gonna have different coaches and mentors that will be providing information to individuals that are just like you and I, that want to take their lives to the next level. That's why we created Believe Nation. But also it gives us a gauge, right? How do I know we've impacted over a billion people? Well, that platform, we're actually creating an app right now that'll be ready the first quarter of uh, 2021. But right now people can go right to believenation.com. We made it for free. We looked said Instagram is free, Facebook is free. Believe Nation is gonna be free. Um, so when that app comes out, and we're now gathering the different coaches and mentors. We'd love to have you be a part of it as well. And, um, you know, just giving people the information that they, need, that they need in order for them to transform the way that they're thinking. So information, it goes in and then it forms, right? So that's, that's the whole premise of- um, and, those, and those five senses put it in us, which is great. All right, 
Last question, uh, which I'm always curious about. You know, you do so much for so many. We share that empowering over a billion people. Over a billion people, we're going to empower. We're going to create a collective consciousness of happiness, of empowerment. That's going to create an abundant world where everyone knows what you put in will form itself, and there's enough of everything for everyone. It already exists. We just got to print it out. That's all, all we have to do: create the form of it, uh, buy the conceive and achieve methodologies that we both believe in. But without one thing, I find people have many challenges, and that's knowing their non-negotiables. Mm. You know, saying no, knowing your non-negotiables, trying to find who you are. It can change every day, grow, learn, and, and, and accelerate. But I find that people aren't willing to look within to find their own values as far as what their own non-negotiables are. What are your non-negotiables in life? Uh, I think the biggest thing when it comes to people uh, is, is to just tell the truth. You know, th there is there's so, much, there's so much garbage out there and I, I hate false advertising. I do. Um, there's so many different businesses out there. There's so many different opportunities for you to make money. And I see it all the time. People embellish. Uh, people, people just straight up lie to people about what their products do, what their services does, or what their company does. Because people, the biggest thing that they have is their hope. And as leaders, they're hanging on a lot of the words that we speak and they believe us. So we've got to make sure that we're always telling people the truth about whatever it is that's going on, whether it's in politics, whether it's in business, whatever it is, tell the truth to people. That's my non-negotiable. It, it actually crawls up my skin when I see people that I know you're not telling people the truth <laughs> about whatever it is that you're doing. And I, I can see how it's impacted people in a very, very terrible way. So that's one of my non-negotiables with everything that we do. And that's why we have the counter right there in Believe Nation for people to see. This is the amount of people that we're impacting so far, but this is where we're actually going. So there's no fluff. I'm, I'm a no fluff guy. You know, so interesting about that is I believe the truth vibrates the fastest. I believe we can only be aware of that which vibrates equal to or less than, than you. And so the more we accelerate and live within our own truth, the more we can be aware of, of the truth and be able to speak Uh, like everyone has and and i've been working on that really hard for 15 years mm -hmm. to make sure that i illuminate the truth that you know the failures and mistakes and lessons that i've learned i'm just curious so, someone that believes like you do and and the truth is that north star like it is for me did you have a period of your life where you were a liar a cheater manipulator were, were you overseller were, were you ever in that period or were you just blessed to be born more on on the truth <laughs> like Abe Lincoln, like Abe Lincoln man we are we, we're all we're all striving to to get even closer to the truth right my belief system is is that Jesus is the way the truth and the light right so that's our daily goal and no one is ever going to live in perfection um but in, in saying that and in, and in doing that, it's, it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse to, to stay there. It's important for you to work towards that every single day with everything that you actually do. So that's the simplicity of it for me. Uh, no, I've not always been the most truthful person. And I mean, yeah, no, no one could ever say that. But it's got to be something that you strive for every single day to bring people the truth. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to set them free. You can only set people free with the truth. Absolutely, man. And you are my beloved friend, the belief of a friend, the great David, unbelievable man. I'm so glad we got to do this finally. Let's do more stuff together. Yeah. We are completely aligned. Uh, I am like you on the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential to empower over a billion people to be happy. I know you are sharing in that vision. Let me know how I can be of service. Where can people find you one more time? Uh, right here on Instagram, obviously, um, but also go right to BelieveNation.com. Uh, register. It's completely free. Um, and um, I, I, we give a lot of information there every single day. We have daily courses that we have there, all free right now um, for people to take advantage of. So Facebook, my first and last name. Instagram, my first and last name. Look for the page uh, that has over 240,000 followers because Right now, it's I've got like 30 fake pages out there. It's crazy. 
So I know how that works. <laughs> well, man, I appreciate you. Let's do this again. Like I said, let me know how I can be of service for the Believe Nation. I'm a big fan of yours. I feel connected to you the minute you came on. And you dress amazing. So thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, David. Appreciate you, buddy. Take care, David. Appreciate All right. you. Right Bye. on. Bye. David Amonti. That is unbelievable. Check it out. You know, it's pinned right there. David Amonti uh, right there. And uh, thank you, everyone. Let's take one question, and then uh, we'll get on to our days. Tons of them lining up in here. Uh, both of you helped me level up this year. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, here we go. How do I stay committed when something gets hard? Well, that's the good part, right? You know, when something gets hard, you're only 40% of the way there. 99% of the people quit when they're 25% of the way there or before. That's because you got to remember things exponentially grow. Just read about compound interest, negative and positive compound interest. Study compound interest. When you believe in compound interest, then you'll really believe in why things get hard because you have lessons to learn that it's an indicator to turn and move in a better direction to a better place. You look at the huge opportunity that you have. So make sure that you do that. Reach out to me. I do trainings every Friday. This one's on seeking approval on this Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Featured on Spotify, featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, featured on all platforms. All my trainings are featured. My podcast with the greatest celebrities, athletes, entertainers, media, billionaires, millionaires, they're all there giving their secrets of the playbook to life, the playbook to happiness. Everyone, Janine, good to see you. Everyone out there, remember most importantly, david at dmelter.com, 949-298-2905. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds.